Okay, Tim, let's start with what are your um, thoughts on what is family centre practice? Well, family centre practice is a, uh, a philosophy, a, a way of working with families. It's based upon um, designing services, basing services on what the families themselves see as being most important. It involves a partnership between the professionals and the parents. It involves taking into account the needs of the family as a whole, not just the individual child, whether it's a child with a disability or the health problem or whatever. Uh, it involves building upon family strengths so that they actually uh, get to learn how to do things and it involves um, helping them learn how to use all the resources they have at their disposal. Um, so it's a, a general um, all-purpose way of working with families. It's how services are delivered as opposed to what is delivered. Family Centre practice has been around a long time. It's, you know, it's, it's statements and philosophy were first expressed, you know, 25, 30 years ago and so on, and evidence has continued to support them as being critical for effective service delivery. So one of the reasons why it's important is um, that you get better results if you use family-centred practice. We haven't really talked enough about, I think, is the issue of, of um, taking into account the whole family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, this is an important aspect of family-centred practice. The child is most definitely the focus. Um, they're the reason we're there. They're, they're what we're trying to um, benefit. But what we understand is that how well a child functions depends on how well the whole family functions. Anything that happens to the child is going to affect the family. Anything that happens to the family is going to affect the child. So we need to be concerned about the family as a whole and indeed about the family circumstances. So what do you think are the key points for practitioners if they're, if they're wanting to work in a family-centred way? At the heart of family-centred practice is good listening. You have to be able to listen, to tune in to the families and be genuinely responsive to um, the way they perceive things and so on. Um, so you need to be able to um, do that effectively. Now, if you don't listen to them, um, well, th they won't listen to you. They're less likely to listen to you. If you don't pay attention to the things that they think are important, um, they are less likely to see the things that you think are important as being things they need to be worried about. Um, so you absolutely have to get on side with them. The way relationships work, we're hardwired to read signals from other people and people will know if you're faking interest in them. So you have to be genuine um, and that's, uh, that's really a critical element. Um, so the first thing is that you have to be um, genuine in being present in the moment and able to tune in to what they're saying and not distracted by your priorities and the fact you've got to be out of here in 10 minutes and all of these kinds of things. That's, that's a skill that professionals have to learn. Then they have to learn how to respond appropriately, um, you know, to respond in a human way, if you like, you know, in a, in a um, so that the person who is uh, so a person gets the sense that you are in fact listening to them. You have heard them and you're able to say, oh, that sounds as though you're feeling like this or that, that's obviously a pretty hard, um, hard road for you to go down uh, and so on. So you've got to be able to respond um, appropriately. But then you've got to enter into a partnership and the partnership is perhaps the least understood aspect of family centre practice. Um, you, obviously family centre practice says what we're trying to do is tune in to what the families want, what their circumstances are, uh, and to build services around that. Um, that's not the same 
as giving parents what they want. Mm -hmm. um, it, what it means is that you're tuning into what they want and that you have acknowledged what they want. Um, but the professional also has a perspective and a partnership is a two-way process. The parent has the ultimate say in family centre practice as to what service is delivered and how it's delivered and so on. But they have to do that on the basis of being appropriately informed about what the options are, what they will gain from this approach versus that approach, how this will help them, what their role is, and so on. If they don't have that information, then the choices they make um, and are less likely to be effective one. So what you've got is a, a meeting of two equally valuable partners who each bring a different kind of expertise to the table. So what the family brings is expertise about their family and their child. They will always know their circumstances and their child better than the professional. Um, and that is a huge consideration. Uh, what the professional brings is expertise in children in general and the ways in which you can help them and so on. So you, those two are being brought and put on the table and put together. And the aim of family centre practice is to build a consensus um, that is greater than the sum of the parts. So the synergy of putting those two things together results in a more powerful intervention than if the professional tried to just run with their perspective or if the professional just let the parent determine what was going to go on. So that, uh, how to describe and how to exemplify that uh, process in practice is the critical challenge in family centre practice and it's a skill and it's not easy mm -hmm. it's it's um, it's not a science it's not an art it's a practice you get better with practice get better with reflecting upon it um, and so on but um, it it and it's something that a skill that you can build over the course of a lifetime so when asked about the challenges of working in a family-centred way, many practitioners raise consistent themes and one of these is, is, is working with um, families that are difficult to engage with. How would you respond to that question of how they, should, um, you know, how they can work with those families? Family-centred practice is enormously important for working with those families because they are precisely the families who don't have uh, any kind of background in working with professionals. So professional services have a language and a culture all of their own. And if you come from a, a family that, where you've seen examples of how your parents work, deal with doctors and various other people and you learn what you can expect from them and the kind of language you use, then you, um, you are put in a much better situation when you come to needing a service like an early child intervention service. Um, so we have to find ways of putting those people at ease. Um, and you first of all have to get, have to do the listening part of it um, particularly well. This is, you know, because in fact professional people don't need as much listening as other people. You know, if, if you've got a lousy bedside manner, as it were, but you're highly technically skilled, then a, a professional person isn't so fussed about that as long as they've got the best person. But for a person who comes from a, a different background or a different culture or uh, Aboriginal background, for instance, then there are barriers in between them and the professional that have to be, um, that have to be bridged. So how do you do that? Um, you've got to just do a lot of good listening, you've got to do a lot of good asking um, to uh, double check that you've understood what's important for them. Tuning in to how they perceive um, what's important to them, um, how that, what their values are, what their lifestyle is and so on. 
Um, and family-centered practice is important because if you don't do that, then the family is less likely to take advantage of what you've got to offer. Another challenge that people will raise is um, the challenge of families being present within a, within a session or a visit, yeah. but actually not being engaged within the, in the yeah. session. So this could be that they're sitting on their phone, or mm. in fact they may prefer to sit outside in the waiting room yeah. while you work with their child. In those instances, um, I, would be, I would be asking, has this person understood the way this whole service works and what they, what they can gain from it? They don't know what the rules of the game are. Um, they uh, may not have been in this kind of situation before. They will be, it'll be likely that they will assume that these highly trained professionals will know vastly more than they do about what to do and will be the ones who are doing the work. So they'll come with that kind of default expectation. And the, the professional has to work to challenge that. And some professionals don't because they prefer the model of being the expert. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but if you're going to work in a family-centred way, then you really need to challenge um, that expectation. You really need to make it clear how this works. How we do this is, and you really need to have a kind of script in your head. Perth is actually the most multicultural capital city in, uh, in Australia. So uh, many of our um, families obviously mm -hmm. are coming from diverse cultures. So again, what suggestions would you give to, uh, to practitioners who may be new in working in early childhood mm -hmm. intervention with children with delay uh, or disability mm -hmm. in this situation? Well, it can present lots of challenges, obviously. But, um, and some people think that uh, what you, you really need is that you need um, people from the same culture who are going to work with them and so on. It's not necessarily the case. What you need is somebody with the right qualities and have to come from the same culture. Sometimes as a way, as an inroad into a, a cultural group, then it helps to have a, um, a worker from the same culture and so on. But um, working with a different culture is just um, another, um, another angle on family centre practice. If you think about um, the families that you work with, for instance, you work with diverse families. Mm -hmm. If you just think about the Anglo-Saxon families, they're diverse. Mm -hmm. they, you know, you've got high functioning professional families and so on and all the way through to people who are really um, struggling uh, and so on and who are living lives um, which you, which we as professionals, respond to uh, in a judgmental way. So any time you come to work with a family who's different from you, it isn't necessarily from a different ethnic culture, it can be from a different subculture within your own culture, as it were. And the challenge is always the same. How does this family think? What's important to them? What are the values for them? In the case of working with someone from a different ethnic culture, it helps to know generally what their values are. You know, that, that the man is a man of the house, or that disability is something shameful, or that the standard ways of treating disability are these kinds of um, treatments and so on. Um, but um, there is um, as much diversity within cultures as there in, is between cultures. So you can't make any assumptions about families um, on the basis of their ethnic culture. They're all different. So it's a matter of listening and being respectful and saying, I don't know much about your religion. I'm going to need you to tell me when I'm uh, getting this right or when I'm being disrespectful or whatever. Um, please tell me because I will feel uncomfortable if I discover afterwards that I've been uh, doing something that you're not comfortable with. Um, and you just ask for clarification all the time. Another challenge is some families just want a direct service uh, for their child and don't have any understanding of the value of their interaction with not yeah. only yeah the, the therapist but also with their child. Yeah. Um, so again, how would you suggest 
that you move forward with that type of challenge? Well, this is similar to the challenge faced when parents don't get engaged in mm -hmm. services. The issue really is uh, that if they're in that situation, then the job is... It, it, we don't hold them responsible for not understanding. Mm -hmm. If they haven't understood how the system works, that's our responsibility. We must always accept that if a parent doesn't engage or doesn't understand the service or doesn't arrive for appointments and so on, then we need to be need to challenge ourselves about our assumption that the parent is somehow at fault mm -hmm. and and instead ask um, what is it that we need to do to um, engage the family or explain or get them involved. So with regard to the issue of um, understanding this fundamental idea about early intervention, which is that um, what the way that the child is going to learn is through what happens in the course of their everyday activities, uh, which by and large are not when professionals are around. Mm -hmm. So the issue is how can we multiply the number of times the child gets to practice a communication skill or a physical skill or a self-help skill or uh, whatever in the course of their everyday um, activities because that's how kids learn. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to um, perfect our articulation of the philosophy and the way things work, mm -hmm. the way that early intervention works, the way that children learn and so on. So we need plain English ways of explaining them, written ways of doing it, ways of telling parents, ways of demonstrating um, videos of other parents talking mm -hmm. about it, uh, every, every way you, possible to get across the central message that this is the way it works. So we know that you can be family centred no matter the, the context, but it is more challenging uh, yeah. within a clinic. Yeah. So for those who are working in a clinic, uh, what things should they consider when they're working in that context and trying to be family centred? Mm. They need to take into account the needs of the whole family. So some of the time needs to be spent thinking about uh, what's happening in the family as a whole and not just about the child. Um, which, um, because the family life can be disrupted if we inadvertently give the parent work to do, as it were, at home mm -hmm. uh, that takes attention away from some of the other children or doesn't take into account the family's, the parents' own needs for time together or for the, etc. The thing about family centred practice is that it's a means to an end. But if yeah. the parent isn't learning anything about how they can help the kid, then the child won't benefit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a medium. It's a medium through which you drive um, strategies, techniques. It's a medium through which you build capacity. You um, provide coaching for the parent in how they can do things um, that are going to benefit the child. And unless the parent or whoever the caregivers are change the way that they characteristically interact with the child, then nothing happens for the child because mm -hmm. yeah. the child is not learning. Yeah. Um, the child is going to learn from the environment. So the environment has to be shaped. So, so family-centred practice is the medium through which you can drive actual strategies. So what the clinic clinician needs to be thinking about is um, building the relationship, making sure we're addressing issues that are important to the family, and then building the parents' capacity, their actual skills through coaching techniques and so on, that will be applicable in the home setting. Mm -hmm. And then checking with the parent, does that work? Yeah. Are you able to do it? Um, and of course, if you actually go home with them and see how they do it, you get a better sense. Yes. Or if the parent has a video, now that we've got such 
ready mm. technologies and so on. If the, the, they say, well, why don't you get your husband to, to video this particular session and bring it along next time and we can have a look at it. Yeah. Um, so you can use that kind of technology in a clinic setting. Um, but it's always focused on this, um, using the medium of family-centred practice to build the skills that will change the parent's capacity to interact with the child in ways that are going to help the kid. Some practitioners say they're being family centred by doing what the family wants. Mm. So to me, that's a bit of a cop out. Yeah. Um, again, what, how would you respond to yeah. someone who says, I'm doing what the family wants? Yeah. Um, well, it's not so much a cop out as, as a misunderstanding of what family centred practice is about. Mm -hmm. The notion, um, it's, it's a misunderstanding of the partnership element. The, the, family, the family does have the final say. But if we didn't share, as professionals, if we didn't share our knowledge with the parents, we'd be in dereliction of our duties. Mm -hmm. um, if we didn't, um, so, and the parent needs to understand that that's the way the partnership works. Yeah. It's a two-way thing. Um, and um, so the parent does get to choose and we do do ultimately what the parent wants, but they are making informed decisions. Um, so they have heard what the professional sees as being important. Uh, they have heard um, what the professional knows about uh, in terms of effectiveness. Yeah. The thing about family centre practice is that you work with families over time. In, early childhood intervention services, if you get several years to work with the family, uh, which would be really good, then by the end of that time, you're using family-centred practice, they will be hugely more empowered, mm -hmm. they will be much better able to uh, deal with professionals, much clearer about what they want, much clearer about what works for their family, much clearer about what works for their kid, what works for them. They will have a whole set of skills for supporting um, the child. They will have mobilised resources to help them and so on. Uh, and the relationship between the professional and the parent will have been transformed. That's what we're aiming at. We're aiming at um, doing ourselves out of business, as it were, or uh, making sure that the parents are not nearly so dependent upon professional services mm -hmm. and that when they do come to use professional services they know what they want. Now not all children uh, are able to have a long-term um, service, yeah. so particularly those children who might come through for um, you know, developmental delay or just a specific mm. issue uh, that they're working on. So there might only be a short term. Yep. Um, what if any differences would you say um, they might need to consider if it's not a long term relationship? Yeah. Let's, let's think about a really short term thing like a GP consultation, mm -hmm. um, which is what? Six minutes or? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so in a six minute consultation, how long does a GP generally listen before they start diagnosing? Mm. You know, it's, it's about 30 seconds. Yeah, not long. Yeah. Um, so there's not a lot of, now if they listened for another minute and explored um, and got a better sense of what the parents, the, the, the patients, circumstances are and symptoms are and li uh, etc they are likely to come up with a different understanding of the thing if they listen in a way which is tuning into how the person is feeling what they're comfortable with in terms of what sort of treatments going to work for them um, etc then they're going to work in a way in which in is the medical version of family-centred practice, which is called family-centred care. Mm -hmm. Now you can do family-centred care in a six-minute interview and uh, get a different result from um, just listening to the symptom and then prescribing on the basis of evidence-based medicine. Mm -hmm. So family-centred practice can be done within any time span within any interaction. It's a matter of 
the listening first, the responding, the tuning into the context, the family circumstances, the person's circumstances and so on, with what they're comfortable on, uh, um, with, what they can do and so on, and finding an answer from your professional armory, your professional quiver full of arrows that will match their circumstances. Um, and you can do that in a GP consultation, you can do that in a short-term piece of work that you do with um, somebody with a developmental delay, and you can do it over five years in working with a family or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, okay. You know, the time, time span doesn't matter. Mm 